ओम तत्सत वेलकम टू ज्योतिर्मानंद सोसाइटी आर जर्नी टू सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन प्लीज सब्सक्राइब आर चैनल फॉर द मिस्टिकल मीनिंग्स ऑफ द स्क्रिप्चर्स एंड टू एंजॉय डेली सत्संग वी आर करेंटली स्टडिंग द बुक योगा ऑफ परफेक्शन समरी ऑफ श्रीमद भगवद गीता कॉमेंट्रीज बाय स्वामी ज्योतिर्मानंद जी महाराज एंड नरेटेड बाय माई सेल्फ स्वामी निखिलानंदा we will be studying chapter 12 verses number 13 to 20 the characteristics of an ideal devotee those of you who are following this regularly we had started with characteristics of an enlightened sage chapter number 2 and now we are moving on to the next logical step how to become that so what should we do and what is an ideal devotee like this is the bhakti yoga chapter so shloka number uh, 13 to 20 shloka number 13 is what we are starting now advesta sarva bhutana maitra karun aivacha nirmamo nirahankarah samadukha sukha kshami meaning he who is without hatred towards all beings who is friendly and compassionate as well who is free from the sense of mindness or attachments and egoism and is equally balanced in pleasure and pain such a devotee is dear to me explanation these eight verses from chapter 13 to 20 of chapter 12 are called amrita ashtakam or the nectarine eight they describe the characteristics of an ideal devotee who has attained communion with the divine self an ideal devotee is called a bhakta devotee of god in this stage there is no sentimentality the personality of a yogi is highly integrated this is the same stage that is reached by a gyani somebody with wisdom and through dhyana or through meditation so bhakta dhyana gyana whether we meditate or we get god through devotion or through um, our wisdom we all reach the same end goal a devotee sees the world as a glorious manifestation of his divine beloved he sees the divine self underlying all the names and forms he is united with the cosmic stream of life therefore he cannot hate anyone he becomes established in the virtue of non violence or ahimsa he becomes a cosmic benefactor he becomes a friend of all a mind of a yogi becomes as pure as a transparent crystal a transparent crystal becomes identified with any object placed near it it becomes rosy when a rose is placed near it however it remains untouched by the objects in the same way a yogi's mind is able to reflect the problems and conditions of others very clearly at the same time it remains untouched by the limitations of others so that's how saints and sages can do so much although with deep compassion yet they produce volumes of scriptures and do so much while they are in this embodiment a yogi therefore is able to become a true friend of any person in fact he befriends the entire creation he develops compassion towards those who are in the lesser levels of spiritual evolution he does not entertain a sense of superiority complex he sees in a sinner a potential saint he sees the divine self unfolding him himself through all beings he is prompted by compassion to serve the self in all the mind of a sage is free from egoism and attachment he becomes a flute in the divine hands there is no tension in his personality he submits himself entirely to the divine will 
he becomes an instrument of god as the personality is integrated surrender to god becomes spontaneous and effortless in the state of a disbalanced personality the effort to surrender to god is sentimental and super superficial many times conditional if this happens then i will pray if this wish gets fulfilled then i will believe there is god etc that's the early kindergarten state but for a deep devotee his love is unconditional in the state of supreme surrender a yogi is not attached to any object of the world he sees the divine expansion reflecting through the blue sky he sees the divine being smiling through the moon he sees the divine grace blowing through the gentle breeze he sees the divine will operating through all conditions of pleasure and pain therefore he is ever balanced in all conditions of life he lives with the spirit nothing exists nothing belongs to me all is the divine self increasing experiences of divine light love enable him to develop forbearance of the highest order so that divine love is a beautiful thing unconditional unbounded love for everybody in the words of yoga vashishta a wise yogi remains balanced in the self even if a rain of burning embers were to fall or even if the raging storm of destruction were to encompass the world or even if the earth were to be tossed into the sky or to be shredded into fragments all these are examples to show us that even in a calamity a sage will not lose his inner feeling practically outside of course he will protect himself or do things that they need to do to preserve the body till the karma eventually ends but inwardly they are established in the self for them this world is nothing more than a dream that is the shloka and moving on to shloka number 14 santushta satatam yogi yatatma drida nischaya मय्य अर्पित मनोर्बुद्ध्यो मदभक्त समे प्रिय मीनिंग ही हु इज एवर कंटेंटेड यूनाइटेड विद मी सेल्फ कंट्रोल्ड पोजेस्ट ऑफ फर्म रिजॉल्व विद हिज माइंड एंड इंटेलेक्ट डेडिकेटेड टू मी सच अ डिवोटी इज डियर टू मी एक्सप्लेनेशन अ योगी enjoys infinite bliss in communion with god the wheel of the world continues to rotate for the unenlightened but he has reached the center wherein there is no movement no turmoil no destruction all his desires are fulfilled for the yogi he has the ocean of bliss why should he crave for droplets therefore he is always contented as a yogi ascends the heights of yoga the virtue of contentment or santosh begins to manifest in his personality contentment arises as a result of internal fulfillment and abandonment of egoistic desires contentment gives rise to an experience of increasing bliss of the self according to patanjali maharishi the composer of uh, compiler of raj yoga sutras of patanjali which says santoshat anuttam sukhalabha by contentment there arises uncomparable bliss therefore they say contentment is one of the gatekeepers to the palace of liberation the subtle desires of the unconscious are responsible for the uncontrolled movements of the mind and the senses these subtle desires or vasanas are based upon the veil of ignorance which separates the individual soul from god in the state of divine communion a devotee tears the veil of ignorance by the force of love and with the result of this divine realization he is able to destroy 
all the subtle desires of the unconscious. Therefore, he acquires supreme mastery over his mind and senses. Though seeing, he does not see. Though walking in the world, he remains untouched like a lotus blooming in a lake. The light of reason in him does not flicker due to the abrupt winds of desire. It burns steadily in the firmament of his mind. Therefore, a yogi does not hold an unsteady or wavering mind. His resolves are firm. He, his convictions are backed up by a divine authenticity. A yogi has no doubts. His heart is filled with the light of truth. His senses are controlled by his mind. His mind follows the dictates of his purified intellect and his purified intellect enters into the flights of intuition and reveals his unity with the divine self. His personality becomes an unobstructed channel of divine peace, beauty and bliss. Such an ideal devotee is dear to God. In order to love God as well as to be loved by God, an aspirant must promote these excellent virtues in his personality. To the extent these qualities are promoted, God is drawn closer and closer to one's personality until there is no separation left. The devotee becomes ever united with God, with the spirit of Dasoham, meaning I am thy servant, a devotee begins to ascend the ladder of devotion. But as he climbs the summit, he experiences Soham. So Dasoham changes to Soham, meaning I am that. So from I am thy servant to I am that, because in the union there is no difference. When the river merges into the ocean, they both become one. That is that state. There is complete union with the divine self. So hum, Lord Krishna is the stealer of da from da so hum. So Lord Krishna with his infinite compassion takes us from da so hum into so hum. But we also have to be totally sincere, totally faithful and uh, put in our self-effort every single day. This is Swami Nithilananda. Hari Om Tat Sat. We will start from Shloka number 15, Chapter 12 in tomorrow's Satsang. Om Tat Sat.